Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Today we will discuss the ultrasound of the thyroid gland. Uh, as we know that thyroid is um, making a big health problem for the public and its enlargement is called gaiter. Also we all are aware that gaiter is, has multiple uh, types such as diffuse gaiter, nodular gaiter, multinodular gaiter or due to some inflammatory disease such as Graves disease, uh, thyroiditis and many other types. Today we will discuss the role of ultrasound in diagnosis and uh, treatment and uh, finally the decision whether the, uh, the modality of the treatment to be decided by the referring physician or the surgeons. As you know, the C's, which is abbreviation for the Sono Experts Educational Society, uh, we will deliver a series of the multiple ultrasound lectures under the uh, supervision of the C's team. Now let's start the thyroid gland and to know the normal anatomy and its physiology. Thyroid gland is composed of two lobes and both of these two lobes are connected by a isthmus which is lying in between the two lobes. Approximately 14% of the patients have an accessory lobe and that is called pyramidal lobe. In this pyramidal lobe extends from the isthmus to hyoid bone in front of the thyroid cartilage. The thyroid lies in front of the trachea and its relationship in posterior laterally there is carotid space, anteriorly in lateral there are the strap muscles and the sternocleidomastite muscle. In posteriorly there is periventricular space and on left the esophagus. The thyroid lobes are ellipsoid in shape and to calculate the volume of any ellipsoid shape there is a formula that we should multiply the width, the distance, the three dimensions in that to be multiplied by 0.5 or divided by 2. Since we have two lobes Therefore, at the end, we will multiply it by 2 and the sum of this volume will be the total volume of the thyroid gland. Now, the isthmus is in this calculation of volume, we are not uh, calculating uh, uh, the part of the isthmus. So, if the isthmus is more than 1 centimeter, it will be included or it may be the sum of the both lobes plus uh, the isthmus. Here one thing that we should take care uh, or it we should be uh, have cautionary measurements that difference in techniques such as pro pressure and also estimation of the thyroid anatomy and, uh, sometime we are inclu including the isthmus and the capsule thickness that can produce inter-observer errors up to the 26% of the total volume. Whenever we are doing the ultrasound of the thyroid gland, some characteristics of the thyroid glands should be taken or considered. First of all, echogenicity. Echogenicity may be isoechoic, hypoechoic or markedly hypoechoic and sometime hyper echoic. And whenever we are talking regarding the echogenicity, there should be a, a reference point. And for thyroid gland, the reference of echogenicity is strap muscles, or it should be compared with the submandibular glands. The second thing which we should consider regarding characteristics of the thyroid gland in sonology that is the eco texture whether this is fine coarse or micro nodularity is present 
If we have the facility for the color Doppler, the vascularity is important. So the vascularity is divided into the normal, mildly or markedly increased or sometimes decreased. Another important factor is the margins of the thyroid gland, which is smooth, microlobulated or macrolobulated. So whenever we are doing the ultrasound and we are making the report, at least we should address the echogenicity, the ecotexture, the vascularity in the margin of the thyroid gland. As you know, here, the thyroid gland and its surrounding structures are imaged. Here in the center, which shows the post acoustic shadowing, this is called the trachea. The two lobes are visible on the right and left, and lateral to these two lobes, there is common carotid arteries. The isthmus is anterior to the trachea, and there are a few muscles, which, uh, the, which are the part of the strap muscles in front of the, or anterior to the thyroid gland. Like, for the example, sternothyroid muscle, sternohyoid muscle, and platysma muscles, or lying anterior to the main bulk of the thyroid gland. And also if you see a, to the anterior and lateral, a, there is the sternocleidomastite muscle and the LCM or the longus coli muscle is lying posteriorly to both lobes we also see the esophagus, which is lying posterior to the left lobe of the thyroid gland. This is the right lobe, and this is the longitudinal view. This, as we see, it is homogeneous structure. It is isoequic to the submandibular gland. The left lobe, in this image, this is also homogeneous structure isoechic and this such findings we will see when we are doing the normal thyroid ultrasound.